preparedness that I had at that shoot, that very first shoot with the model or any other shoots where I felt like, I want to hear your, I want to hear the, the bad, I want to hear your experiences with the bad experiences. I want to see where your failures, show me all your bad shots. You, you know, just a class that says like, these two amazing photographers, here's all of our bad shots when we started. I would have been like, that is going to sell out quick. I What's up guys, Evans be here. A few weeks ago, I shared a video on how I actually failed the shoot and had to reshoot it to fix some things I did not like. I think this video was a bit cathartic as it helped me basically work through the process how, how you fail and how you fix anything that doesn't go so well during your shoot. And I was wondering, I don't see that many videos on failures on the internet except when they're funny. Um, so I was wondering if any of my friends that are also photographers have any stories to share on how they had to reshoot or actually work through a very difficult situation in order to come up on top. On that note, here are three of my friends, Rob Hall, Francisco, and Daryl, sharing their stories on how they had to overcome a lot of odds in order to fix a shoot or actually make a shoot go good. And I want to thank them for participating and also sharing their stories. It doesn't really look good for most people because uh, we are used to the model of just sharing your good hits on the internet. So I want to commend them for actually going forward and sharing their information and how they actually had to overcome. And I hope what we're doing right now here is inspiring you to just keep pushing forward, keep on shooting, like go back to it because it happens to everyone. Every professional photographer, anyone that is trying something will eventually fail and you only have to bounce back. So again, I want to share these stories and here they are. For the people that doesn't know you, uh, Francisco, can you tell us who you are? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, for anybody who don't, who doesn't know who I am, my name is Francisco Hernandez. I am a portrait photographer based in South Texas, the very bottom of Texas. And I specialize in off camera flash. So that means that I pretty much use my lighting to get the results that I want and not having to rely on just natural light. Not to say that there's anything bad with natural light, but I prefer the control that you have with getting your light wherever you want. And getting awesome commercial kind of looking results. And I've been doing this for a, a while now, I think actually a decade now. So uh, yeah. yeah, I feel like it's a long time. So I, I, I know pretty much what I'm doing with lighting and I just try to share as much as I can on anything that I have on social media. So Facebook and Instagram and uh, YouTube. Awesome. And um, as you know, like when I first like ask you, like okay, my, the original goal of the video is to share stories of like some failures that we have. It doesn't necessarily be technical. It just has to be like something that happened um, during a shoot that wasn't optimal. The reason being is I shared another video before explaining that uh, I was testing a technique and it failed the first time. I try again. So I just want to get your story. Like, uh, some, did you have something happen like that 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 occurred to you? Well, in terms of like specifically like a technique there's many 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 examples of that when i was just testing stuff out when i was learning but like i want to say like in terms of like a failure of, of an overall shoot that wasn't with just me and ashley um there i guess that would, the, the best example of that would probably be my very first shoot with a i was gonna say a male model but actually it was my very first shoot with a model in general that shoot um it uh it wasn't so much a technically a failure in, in, in the results that I got, but it was a failure in, in so many ways for myself because I felt like I could have done way, uh, way better in certain different things that I could go on about right now. If that's, if that's something that's interesting to you. <laughs> yeah, of course. Let's, let's go, let's get into it. And uh, so can you tell us people like what, what was the goal of the shoot? Like what was the, the intent? Yeah. So I was trying to get better in portraiture um, because I did technically start way back in high school around 2007 but then you know of course you're in high school and you have to do tests and then senior year you have to do all the important stuff and then I actually went straight into college so it wasn't really until 2000 and like after I graduated actually in 2000 and like 14 15 16 where I really got to focus on my portraiture mm -hmm. and I think it was in 2014 um, yeah, after I graduated that I was like, you know what, I really want to focus on portraits. And all I've done so far is take pictures of just friends and family, you know, like, I want to get more experience with this. And let me try to set up, you know, a shoot with an actual model. Okay. And so that's why I was like, maybe I'll you know, see who's in the area and see, you know, what model I can find. And, and maybe, it'll, you know, it'll result in better or it'll end up in better results in my portraits in my workflow, in my portfolio. So then I was like, 
okay, I'm going to find somebody and I'm going to work with somebody that's an actual model and see, you know, how it goes. And, and, <laughs> and then that, you know, there was a bit of, you know, all over the place in, in that aspect. So um, I guess I could just start, start from the beginning uh, of the shoot and, and just go from there, I guess. Yeah, sure. I like, but before we get into it, like, did something happen to you the day before or something like, were you tired? Were you like, like, did you, is, is there something that happened before you, that shoot that like affected you personally, like that made you so, less yes. confident? So I think, uh, I think I'm not alone in this. I think a lot of photographers, even, I, I mean, I, I'm hope I'm not alone in this, but I hope that I think a lot of photographers, when, even after years of shooting, they still kind of get anxious and they kind of have this kind of fear that what if the shoot doesn't end up going so well, or what if the shoot is going so well, but then you don't like the photos and they don't like the photos. Mm -hmm. And that always goes through my mind after, you know, right before every single shoot. So mix, you know, mixing in that kind of, you know, a little bit of panic that, you know, a little bit of future thinking, um, you know, there's also, you have to make sure that you have everything that you, you need for the shoot so that, so sometimes when I'm getting a little bit like anxious about thinking about so many things about like, how are they going to feel while the shoot, how they're going to feel after and all these different things are going through my mind. And then I have to think, oh, wait, you know, did I get my camera? Did I get my lens? Did I get my SD cards? Did I get all this? So all that stuff, you know, the checklist can sometimes kind of get lost in all that kind of thought process, all those, that panic. So for, aside from just the, the stress beforehand, um, uh, it kind of, I think the stress kind of ultimately made me not kind of, kind of made, it made it difficult for me to kind of fake the confidence that I usually tried to do at every photo shoot. Yeah. So I would kind of, it was easy to kind of fake confidence with like friends and family, because for one, they're not taking it so serious. It's and, just they, and, they, and, and they haven't seen that many photographers beforehand. So like they wouldn't True. know. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they just expected something to be fun and not so serious. Mm -hmm. So with this model, I was kind of freaking out more so because it was my first shoot with a model. Yeah. And, you know, I was making, trying to, I was, I thought I had did my best to make sure I had everything I needed, but then, so before the shoot, I was, you know, panicking and then at the shoot, I'm here making sure I have everything I need. And then I, I, I can't even find a light stand. <laughs> so I had, I had light, I had the modifier and I'm glad I had like a camera battery and SD card and lenses, yeah. <laughs> but then I didn't have no light stand. Mm -hmm. So I was freaking out for that. And I was like, Oh, you're going to have to go. You're going to have to go drive. I was telling my fiance, I was like, you have to go drive there. You have to come back. Or I need, I need to find somebody who I know that it's an area or we're going to buy one at Best Buy. Cause Best Buy was like, uh, five minutes away. Okay. So then I was like freaking out. So many things were going through my head at the, you know, before the shoot and at the very beginning, before you, before the, even the subject even came in into the picture. So I was like, just, just there was so much panic. <laughs> yeah. So basically like you, you, you kind of tripped yourself before even you got there. So that made the entire day that more and more like that, that magnification is stressful basically. <laughs> yeah. I think they call it, the, what's it called? Um, it's like a it's a phrase that means that like I I made it this this stressful thinking I made it into a reality of like what could go wrong. Oh uh, yeah, I, I I think I know what you mean, but I don't know. Self fulfilling exact... prophecy. Exactly, what, exactly. I think yeah. that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah. So like I was like, it's gonna go messy. You're gonna get you're gonna mess up so much, and then I was like, and it happened. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, yeah. So we didn't have a light stand, and this is when I was still using posse buff lighting. Oh, so <laughs> it was not so very um uh pra easy. practical yeah yeah it was not so practical there was wires and everything mm -hmm. so um so my fiance she actually had to hold the light for a lot of different shots but in the very beginning um i'm not even sure why i didn't tell her to like hold the light but i have i have a couple of shots where the light on the ground and it's very uplit very much like i think they call it monster lighting so it's not yeah. flattering but um, it was a male model, so it wasn't, it was kind of very, like, my excuse was, like, it's very grunge, it's very <laughs> tough, very gritty, yeah. and I was like, uh, yeah, it's going to work, it's going to work, but then, um, but then, yeah, so I, I have a lot of shots where the light's on the ground to begin with, and I wasn't really happy with those results, and so, again, with the faking confidence, I'm good at doing it now, like, I'm actually good at getting in my head in front of me on the camera, 
but back then it was kind of like very much like like pure luck in terms of like did i get the like you know how i want it did i get the expression the composition it was all luck to me back then i was just like it was a guess, guessing game so um so with the lighting for one i was like ah, it's not good so as i'm shooting i'm doing a lot of like looking at the camera looking at the results and not being happy with it and that itself was making the the subject not so confident in the ability like my yeah. ability to take good photos and you never want that to happen because it's it's honestly night and day difference when you work with this, with somebody that know like they know that you're doing you know everything right and then the opposite if they think that you're doing everything wrong they're going to have the worst expressions it's going to be like pulling teeth it's going to be so hard and and I, I forgot to even mention that um, I, like I said before, this was the very first model that I worked with. And then um, I, I swear, I thought I told this person before that, before the shoot, but I, I must have not, that they, was, they were going to be the first model that I worked with. And at the shoot, when I told them that, it was, uh, again, it was like night and day. It was like, oh, hey, how, Francisco, how are you doing? We're, we're going to do a photo shoot. And then I told them, I was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be an awesome shoot. You're the first model that I worked with. And I think it's going to end up in a lot of great results. And then... <laughs> As I said that, it was, it was like, what the heck? Like, I'm the first person you're going to work with, blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, he went from being happy to like, like very much like if I told him that like I ran over his dog or something. Yeah, so, yeah. No, and that's not a good feeling. No, not at all. And, and I think it, it's not, not, not to take out responsibility from you because as a photographer, I think we have to accept that all the failures are ours. Like, I mean, most of what happens is under our control. So it's our fault. But like, I work with like people like models that are experienced with first time shooters and then they kind of guide them through and then like very comforting saying, Hey, don't worry about it. It's just a, it's just a photo shoot, right? There's, there's no stake. There's, there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing that's going to come out of it. That's going to be like so bad that you can't redo it or you can't reshoot or like, there's like this, there are some saving graces out of this. So. Yeah. It's not like if it was like a, a very quick elopement, or something that yeah. they paid a lot of money and got really or a wedding. Before. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Those are things where you, you really can mess up. No. But if, I mean, a simple shit with the model. I mean, it's not the end of the world. If, 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 if it had bad results, Yeah, but cool. yeah. So I, I told them that and that kind of that, I think that was probably aside from the actual like gear aspect and mind, you know, my mind yeah. being all over the place um, psychologically, that was like the first mis like I guess um, mistake I would call it because I did communication aspect of that whole the whole the photo shoot that was that was where I would say that I failed and not telling them this but like I guess it would also be a failure in not letting you not communicating with the model that I actually kind of know what I'm doing even though if I even if, even though I, I kind you, of wasn't, you don't look too confident <laughs> I wasn't all the way there like yet but I was I knew how to make good photos mm -hmm. in photoshop or in real life it didn't matter i could make it into something nicely you know afterwards yeah but yeah that was probably the the first fail on my in, on my part with the person yeah but then you know the second thing was probably just like the whole not so confident like um uh, maybe we're gonna go over there and yeah you definitely don't want to have that that um come off as a photographer, you always want to know what you're doing because the photo the, the model's there to, you know, they're, they're not there with somebody inexperienced or there's somebody with experience who, so they, they think that you're going to know what you're going to do and get great results. So that yeah. lack of confidence was a huge one for, for the entire shoot. It yeah. just, it kind of just drained both, both of us. I think even Ashley too. <laughs> yeah. Especially about, well, especially because you're the leader of the, the set, right? You, you control, no, you control not everything that like you can't control the weather. But you control what happens and the direction, the input, and if you start being non confident, you start being stressed, and then your in like your output is very negative too, right? So it just influences, I think, a lot of things. So instead of like being focused on just like building shots, you if you focus on like building, uh, like fixing whatever problem you had before, and it's, it's just yeah, it's like a self fulfilling process. It just accumulates and accumulates and accumulates until you reach a filling point. Yeah, it was it was just building on all the negativity from the from the start yeah and i think what kind of helped was that 
And I, at the point of the of the photo shoot, this is I think it was 2014. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really using a lot of natural light, and it's my whole learning experience with photography is a little a little bit weird. But I had like basically no understanding or little experience, I guess, with off with uh, with natural light. Okay. And then I went straight into lighting, and so I never got to the point where I needed to focus on just natural light. So it kind of helped that I, that during the photo shoot, when I was like all this, like unsureness and all the lighting and not having a stand there that I was like, I need to make it simpler. I need to make it easier on me so that I can free some stuff through my brain. And so what I did was I, I was like, you know what, we're going to put the light down. We're going to use a, a diffuser instead and a reflector. Yeah. I had, I had the little five and one ones. Yeah. So then I, I was like, let's just diffuse the light. Let's just, just use natural light, see how that works. And I think from that point of the shoot till the end of the shoot, we use nothing but natural light. And that was kind of a bit of a saving grace because it ultimately made it so that we were, again, less, less complicated, freed up my brain, freed up everybody else's brain. Um, and actually, one thing that a lot of, a lot of people realize is that if you always want to kind of have a communication with the, with the model, if not so much about the actual shoot, but just kind of just, well, you know, how are you? How's your day? All this little chit chat, stuff like that kind mm -hmm. of helps kind of make it less stressful and just, you know, less about the job. And so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have Ashley, you know, my fiance as either assist and she'll be able to, to talk to them like that. But a lot of times when it comes to like using lighting, especially if I'm using a bit of a big modifier, yeah. Um, then they'll kind of, she'll kind of be like hiding behind it. <laughs> yeah. So that, that kind of communication aspect there, if I'm too far away, if I'm busy thinking, then it kind of like, it creates a barrier. And then without the lighting, when we took it out to make it more simpler, she was able to just kind of focus again, back on communicating with the subject and making them feel comfortable, like breaking the ice in different ways. But yeah, that, that diffuser really, really helped and using natural light really really helped with the photo shoot and kind of like yeah it's it, i would say it pretty much saved the shoot so uh, that was the next question basically is like how did you save it so basically you saved it by simplifying the actual techniques that you're using and not like stressing too much about it and just like you know what let's make something happen out of it by just like making go going back to the basics of using a reflector or a diffuser which is i think it's everyone's bread and butter basically it's, it's the basics of the basics of like uh, use a diffuser, use a reflector in, at worst, and then uh, even the reflector, a five in one, even just a silver one, I think, can get really, really, really far. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, that, that really did help the shoot because um, I, I'm not sure if anybody has experience with the policy buff lights, but yes, I want to say, I, I do. <laughs> yeah. So, I had, I had this one transmitter that goes on the camera mm -hmm. and you have to like change the channel. Oh, like, you have you have the you didn't have the cyber commander. You had the other one, right? I had the other one, yeah. Uh, so you okay. had to rotate this little dial, and I never thought it was good in in actually being precise with like setting the channel that you wanted. So it was just like like you turn the little thing, and then get it to the right number five, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And I never like I don't, I don't know if it was just my specific transmitter, but there was difficulty in getting it to the right channel. Okay. And getting the right channel on the the light itself, and then matching it so that it fires, you know, when I take the shot. Okay. So so that was I had I always had a little bit of issues with that with my um with my transmitter and the receiver. So that was a big thing, you know. I'm like I'm taking a picture, and then the, it misfires or something. It could have been my fault, you know, could have been user error. But that was experienced in that. So that you know, getting that out of the way, that little bit of stress that yeah. those misfires, and then for one, getting the the modifier out of the way so Ashley can talk to the guy and then yeah just rely on that natural light it wasn't to say that I didn't know how to use natural light but I always aimed for the results with off-camera flash very commercial yeah, it, very it's sharper it's it's, it's, yeah. it's controlled yeah 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 I like the control again yeah but then um but then you know kind of relying on natural light it was kind of like forcing me to like um take that mindset out like you don't have control anymore. You you know, follow the light, follower. You know, be a follower. It's much easier. <laughs> so that's what I did for the photo shoot. Yeah, it is. And I and I used the diffuser, and it really helped. And it also really helped because, um, I think, with how the it was really nice and sunny that day. Thankfully, mm -hmm. it wasn't like a boring cloudy day. 
So it kind of it kind of helped in that that sunniness. It kind of helped me still getting the nice dramatic kind of results that I liked. So I was able to get those results still, even though I wasn't using my flash. So that was really nice. Oh, that's nice. That, that's great. And um, and like like and it, is there any lessons you took out from this? Like let's say that you took out from this specific shoot. And then you exported out of, of like, did you apply, let's say something that you learned saying never again, or like, what, what did you learn from that quote unquote failure, uh, that, that occurred during that shoot? I know it was, it's like a, it's like a lengthy, there's like a lot of steps. But is there something specific you took out of it that like, that now every shoot that you do, there's something new that you do just to fix that issue? Yeah. So I think having, uh, kind of pre-visualizing the shoot will really, really does help. I think at the time, like I'm good at doing that now, but over, over the, you know, the learning process, I didn't have that pre-visualization. So, mm -hmm. right. Like a lot of times now what I'll do is I'll think of the, the outfit. I'll think of the location. I'll think of specific shots at the location. I'll think of the lighting that I'm going to bring and how, how it's going to fall on them or what different looks I can create with that lighting. And if the lights, if it's going to be sunny that day, or if it's going to end up being a cloudy day, I have all that running through my brain so that I can be prepared because I don't want to have that unpreparedness that I had at that shoot, that very first shoot with the model or any other shoots where I felt like I could have done better. Having that, that pre-thought process really, really, really does help. And with, with, with so many aspects of the shoot, actually not just yeah. so, so much just like thinking about, you know, what I'm going to do, but specifics actually does help for me. It's actually like what lens am I going to use? What are, you know, what if they want some wide shots? What if they want to show this spot of the location? I just think it, if you, if you don't do it last minute, because I think that's, a, that's another thing that I was mistaking uh, at the time I was thinking, okay, the photo shoots, you know, in four days, I, you know, I'm good, you know, whatever. I don't have to communicate with the model until the before the shoot and that's not right you want to have communication throughout the whole process yeah you want to make sure that you know what they're going to wear so that you don't get surprised yeah. by the outfit <laughs> <laughs> not matching or something yeah there's so many different things but i just think think like it's as simple as just thinking ahead but it's so much more than that honestly because there's so many things to consider but if you go ahead and you know actually sit down and think okay you know what you know how do I want this photo shoot to come, you know, to, to results and what kind of work it's, it's just so much, but it's as simple. I guess my, my simple advice would be just to don't procrastinate. Don't wait till the last minute to think that, you know, you don't think, Oh, I have all the gear that I need. You know, it's all good gear. Yeah, I'm going to just bring it to the photo shoot and then be able to create great photos. So yeah. people can wing it. There are people out there who are just naturally gifted and, and, you know, kind of working very fast on you know on the ball but honestly it just for people like me who are just tend to stress <laughs> for, for before every photo shoot having that sit down and thinking about what's gonna you know the shoot entirely and how it's gonna go it really really does help you in terms of stress and in stress will just help you remember so much about the shoot and yeah just just think ahead of the shoot and yeah think of, think how it's gonna go down before you actually do it yeah, the military has to say they say um, a proper preparation prevents pro poor performance. So it's five P's. Again, uh, I'll repeat it for the people in the back. <laughs> proper preparation prevents poor performance. Uh, so I, I think you just listed everything, right? Just like think about the outfit, think about the location, think about like what kind of look do you want out of this? It's it's like the colors, like the there's this, there's so many little aspects that you can, and I think it, it goes back to I'm not sure if you feel this way. Sometimes I have like um. Uh, I feel like I'm I'm a fraud. <laughs> I don't feel super confident going to that postage is is just insane. But again, I think a way to prevent all of this from happening is just pre-planning, having everything laid down, and having backups in case something fails. Right. So I, I, I like you. I used to use Possible for a lot, especially back then in the studio. Cyber Commander. I love Possible stuff. Uh, they I think they made landmarks in terms of progressing um, affordable light for everyone, like people like you and I, they're starting out. Yeah, that's actually uh, why I got them to, in, to begin with. Yeah, because they're, they're inexpensive and they work great. I mean, I still have like some of my Einsteins in the studio. They haven't seen light in a long time, <laughs> <laughs> but they're still great light, right? And, uh, yeah. and and if you understand the limitations of like, okay, you need a battery, that's like the, the what's called again, the Vagabond, I think, battery 
Vagabond Mini. A Vagabond Mini, exactly, for your system. And you need to charge this before. But in case that fails, you can always uh, run like a super long AC. And uh, just like, again, you let out everything. Like, like prepare. Don't procrastinate. Plan in advance. Look at what the elements that you want to look at, like, and communicate. Like, communicate, communicate. There is no such thing as, like, well, almost no such thing, in my opinion, of, as over communicating, right? You just like yes. lay out everything in advance like that. There's no surprises. And if there's a surprise, actually you have, I think being so prepared gives you like some latitudes in terms of what you can do. So, Cause you can hit the basics really quick, get the shit out of the way and then move on to something that's more uh, like more elaborate or go fancy. Right. Yeah. I, and I was going to say that earlier and I forgot. I was like, if anything, if you want to do, you know, if you had to choose choose between communicating too much or communicating too, Little. too less, yeah, it's better to do the over one because yeah. like you don't want to again. Then that's what I, was, I had done. I had just I was like, you know what, photo shoots and this day, and you know I'll see you then. And then I just don't communicate with the person at all, and and then you know be surprised that they don't know <laughs> that I this is the first shoot or there anything or you know they literally just probably had my portfolio to go by. And that, oh yeah, okay. I think I trust this guy to do some photo shoot. And then, yeah, but then all this stuff with like actually knowing who I am or getting to know me, that was never there. So, um, so we got to know each other at the shoot and there was a little bit of difficulty or actually a lot of difficulty during the shoot. And then, um, but ultimately that shoot ended up being like a, a great experience in, in uh, at least in the results because the guy that I, that I shot with he actually loved the shots and he was like praising them for like at least the next couple of years. Like, Oh, wow. <laughs> I remember, I remember on Facebook, he had like, he had posted the pictures and then somebody had commented like two years later. Oh, this is a nice picture. It was like a profile picture. And he's like, Oh, thank you. Yeah. I really like this set. And I remember coming across that comment. I didn't comment or anything. I didn't like anything, <laughs> but I was like, I was like, Oh, that's awesome. And that's because yeah. I was so stressed. And that was it's like, I thought I was going to, create horrible horrible shots during that photo shoot but he actually liked it and i was actually happy with the results once it got to the natural light part mm -hmm. and so yeah i was happy with that experience even though it was bad experience <laughs> well it's a lesson right and yeah. I, I i think i mean like like you said the experience you gained out of this shoot like laid out a lot of foundation for you i think in the future i mean i all my failures that i had in my life just like fixed a lot of things very quickly in my head saying you're not doing that anymore uh, like, <laughs> like, like extremely quickly. Like, it's the hardest lessons you can take, but it's the best lessons because they will stick with you forever. And the fact that we're in 2021, the shoot happened in 2014, <laughs> I still can remember <laughs> exactly how you felt that very day. Vivid. Yeah, it's still very vivid, right? So I think it's the it's the the impact of those failures, as any creative will have. I mean, I don't think there's a creative that that can escape this failure unless you don't take no risk or you don't take any shots actually that's the only way then and even and then as a creative you're not being creative you're just you're just a total failure because you haven't yeah. taken that step so i think yeah i honestly think that more more um i don't know more famous photographers out there at wppi they just need to have there's always these different classes that says like oh um awesome lighting oh awesome you know marketing oh awesome this is, like i want to hear your i want to hear the the bad i want to hear your experiences with the bad experiences I want to see where your failures. Show me all your bad shots. You know, just a class that says like these two amazing photographers. Here's all of our bad shots when we started. I would have been like, that is gonna sell out quick. I want to yeah. see that. Yeah, so, and, and how they bounce back from it, right? And how they yeah. what they learn what and what that, they learn. Yeah, I want to yeah. see that stuff. Lessons from the field, and I, I think that's the that's uh, that, that's that's a good idea actually. Maybe we should do that in WPPI this year. I would Are you love going? to do that. With, you know, <laughs> I actually you know on my YouTube channel, I there's one series that I started to just show people all of the bad shots that I took at a photo shoot, you kind of, you know, like culling through them and then, you know, showing the one shot that I really liked or this, the different shots that I really liked, mm -hmm. but I show them, you know, I, this is one, this is how I started and it looks bad and this looks bad and the lighting looks bad here, but then I changed it and then changed this. And then, then it got to the awesome end results. And I think that transparency, I, I honestly, I don't mind like, Somebody can go into my computer right now, search through all my, you know, search through all my Lightroom catalog and see all the bad shots. And I'm like, yeah, I took bad shots. Nobody's perfect. So I, you know, I think more photographers should be like that, just to kind of um, humanize them. Because sometimes we just see 
nothing but their great results. And then we just kind of hype them up and put them on a pedestal in our brain. And then, you know, it, I think, you know, people are people, you know, they're not anything other than just photographers who, who failed a lot, learned from it and got better and then reduced just the minimum, you know, the amount of mistakes that they made. So I think if more photographers were transparent like that, I would love, to, I would actually love that. I, I would pay for that, I'll, you know, $5 yeah. to see all my bad <laughs> photos from this year, from this photo shoot. I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm down to see that. So yeah, it's, it's encouraging. <laughs> like, let's say, I don't want to call names, but like uh, I, I've seen a lot of, I, I, I would pay to see some, some of the people that I really admire go through yeah. that process and, and show, yeah, I feel, I, I, I do it on Instagram. I post my setups and saying, this didn't turn out exactly the way I want to because I'm just, I'm just being transparent. Uh, of course, these, I, I think you agree, right? They're, they diminish with time, right? Like you don't see that many bad photos or like bad results out of your portfolio anymore, the more and more you do it. So like if you have to take a guesstimate uh, in percentage, let's say, of good to bad photo shoots from 2014 for your first model shoot to today, like what's the ratio of like, good sessions versus bad sessions like back probably, then before now like that's a good that's a good question um i would say that maybe maybe and i, I want to give myself a better number but i'm thinking realistic and i'm thinking it's like 70 percent good shoots and 30 percent bad shoots and back those back. bad shoots are like um not necessarily entirely bad but they could have it's my it's my thinking that it could have done could have gone way better and mm -hmm. i could have got the results much easier if i had this done this this and this yeah and and nowadays like uh that was 70 30 back then nowadays like well, what would you estimate of of like oh right now it's 70 30 well, oh right now 70 30? no wait okay. i would say for now it's like like 90 92 to 8 percent okay like now that's precise <laughs> Yeah, it's because I was thinking not. I was thinking not nine out of every ten shoots. I was like maybe nine, a little bit more. Yeah. But like, well, no, yeah, I would say like from the years like 2014 to 15, 16, 17, 18, I think it started to get better towards. Um, I think 2017 and 2018 is where I really buckled down and tried to get better at certain techniques that I was really liking, and that is now kind of like my style that's consistent. But I think the learning experience from 2014 to 2017 is where it kind of stayed so much at maybe even maybe even worse like 60 40 uh, maybe 55 50 40. <laughs> maybe 50 50 <laughs> awesome maybe 50 50 maybe 50, 50. I, wouldn't go, I wouldn't go more than that <laughs> okay awesome well it's been it's been good to hearing that because I, again i had a recent failure i was doing some drag lighting so basically some slow shutter speed with flash and uh, there's all kinds of reasons why it failed and if I head back to it, uh, you know, the fact that you, okay, the clothing wasn't great. That was the first thing that clothing wasn't great. And uh, uh, like that, my, my, I shoot a lot in the studio because I live in Canada. We have like two months of like summer. <laughs> so yeah. you, have to, you have to maximize the studio time. Um, and like, like and my studio wasn't like per se, like prepared for the actual set. And like, but it's a whole like, like a, and it just follows like a series of catastrophe uh, of, like from there. Uh, anything you did afterwards to maybe like boost your confidence? Because um, I, I ended up like reshooting the exact same session when now with the lessons that I learned, but anything that you did after that male model shoot to like, you know what, let's get back into it and let, let's just like, take the tiger back by its, uh, by, by its hair or by its head, I, whatever. I think that, that the thing that I learned the most was just to, to try not to be so surprised and by different things. Mm -hmm. And like, again, just that's just another way of saying, just be more prepared because I was actually surprised by, like, actually, I, I, I mentioned that this was the first male model that I worked with, but I yeah. still, still after that photo shoot, it wasn't like I worked with nothing but models. I still was working with, like, a friend of my brother's or my fiance's cousin or different things. I was still doing that because I just wanted to learn. I needed to find somebody to work with. And that was kind of, again, relaxed because that shoot was very stressful. Yeah. And I wanted to do more shoots where it was just relaxed. So um, I learned again, you know, just relax a little bit. And at um, at future shoots, I just learned to to be more prepared to not, to know. One thing that's huge actually is just knowing the outfit alone, because there I have the pictures on my computer where like I'm doing a photo shoot on a nice field, 
And I'm like, okay, you know, I hope they bring something nice. Nice. To, I'm hoping that they do something. They they bring something in a nice outfit that matches the vibe of the of the nice field that I chose to work with on a nice sunny day. And then they show up, and they look like they're going to the club. They look oh, like they <laughs> they they have a tight the glasses, shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> they have yeah sunglasses. They have like a a leather skirt and and high heels on. Mm-hmm. And and it doesn't match the vibe of what I'm doing at all. And I'm here like having to think, wow, I just want to just um, cancel the shoot right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I and like because it just doesn't match. Like sometimes when that happens, I think I didn't share a lot of the pictures or I just nice. sent Not them sure. the pictures. Yeah, I just yeah. I just sent them sent them the the model themselves or the the subject themselves the pictures. But um, I think at the shoot, at the shoot to, to kind of hide my, um, like, dis, I don't know, my disappointment, I guess my disappointment is I'm like, oh, it's, an, it's, a, it's a very clashy, it clashes with the environment, just like, just, that's basically the nice way of saying, like, that, that outfit don't work for nothing. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll try to my best to be like, oh, it clashes with the environment, it's very, like, like a model, like, very magazine, where, it, like, I don't, it just I don't want to ever be surprised anymore it yeah. just it doesn't feel good when you're like excited for the shoot and then they just it just don't match so basically so. To, to bounce back from like your bad session with that male model you you still went ahead with shooting some some more relaxed setting to just build back your confidence into shooting some models right I think it was it was very necessary to do that because yeah. it because again having that shoot like a big old stress and then imagining if I did several more of those in a row and just stress, 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 I think it would just kind of, it would kill the, the like, there's always that passion for photography. And I think it would just kind of like push against that passion and then um, make me want to like, make me want to quit in, in, in harsh terms. But um, actually that year, I, I actually did a lot of things to kind of help that passion stay there and, mm-hmm. and grow and grow and did a lot of fun shoots with myself and with um my my uh my fiance's cousins who we babysat a lot i have photo shoots where we're just there having fun and taking pictures of ourselves being being very silly and i think it's important to do the shoots like that just for fun just for yourself to keep that passion alive and and then after all that then you know yeah do the stressful stuff and then do your best to kind of be more again prepared was it prepared proper proper preparation prevents poor performance there you go proper preparation prevents poor performance yeah the five p's that's a good one there the five p's yeah the five p's (laughs) yeah so okay that's awesome so yeah i think it goes back to everyone like i look at one of my like favorite all-time photographers is julie yell and like i mean that's my my favorite yeah 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 he he shoots crap tons of of personal projects and and i would love to get him like one day to talk to him and see like i would want to assist him yeah uh, (laughs) go back to ethiopia yeah (laughs) i'm I'm not going there but uh yeah but i just like to see like i just like use like from your situation that you work with something very stressful and then you went back to your roots or something that you actually more are there's like no there's no there's no incentive there's no monetary problems there's no there's like there's no um there's no consequences in having just some shots that, that you won't never share again and you'll, no one will see except your close family and they won't have public impact right there, there's nothing except except for working with someone that might be known in the industry that might uh, have a reputation that might this that might that you know like there's no consequences so I think those personal projects are super important to like you might get back into it and get back into the work and get back into like build back your confidence into no, it's shoot again, shoot again, shoot again, you know, so. Yeah, he, he did a lot of passion projects and I think yeah. that really, that really helped him stay on, like, but that's again, like he, he knew what he was doing in terms of his, his work. Like, I don't think he would have took on those projects and then been like, man, I don't know my natural light settings. <laughs> I don't know all that stuff. He knew what he was doing. Like, yeah. I, I've been following him for the longest time. He was actually the reason why I bought Posse Buff Lighting because I think at a time around that time, 2011, 2010, he was using like he was using either not specifically those lights, but he was using those lights. And mm-hmm. I was like, this guy is amazing. I want to I want his lighting. And I, I was actually very fortunate to meet him. I think it was 2000. Yeah, I saw that, that photo, right? The, yeah, 2018 uh, or 19, I yeah. want to say. And I was like, I was like, 
I'm the type of photographer or per, no, the type of person who's like, don't meet your idols. Don't meet your <laughs> idols. <disappoint> you. <laughs> don't meet your idols. They're going to be worse. And, and then I was like, no, I want to meet him. He's the reason why I use off camera flash. And the reason why I, I love his work. I love, I love it. I was like, he's an amazing guy. And I was like, okay, fine. I'm going to do it. I'm going to talk to him and say, hi, I'm a big fan. And he's like, yeah, well, you, know, how, you know, he was super nice. So mm. I'm, I'm so happy about that. Like legit, Joey L is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he is. Uh, and especially so young, like he's, he's around your age. Right? But he's a little younger than me, but I a think? little older. Yeah. I want to say like 35, 36. Yeah, okay, he's my age, basically. Like, I, I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure. But yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's pretty inspiring to see someone so talented. But he started super young, right? But I think he, was, it goes he got back. online early too. Yeah, very early too. But he started so young. And I think one thing that uh, people forget, I'm not sure if you agree, is that you have you only seen the highlight reels, right? <laughs> you only yes. seen the highlights. And you they, these guys have been at it for years. Like, I mean, years and years and years of shooting and repeating and failing and shooting and repeating and failing. And I see a lot of people give up after one year or two. Like, man, man photography is like a vocation. It, it, it's... It's a long, long haul thing. It, it's going to suck everything out of you, but it's rewarding yeah. because you can create whatever you want, right? I think, I think, I don't know if this is just a me thing, but I think I'm a very competitive like person in terms of like video games. Mm -hmm. uh, growing up, I played a lot of video games and I, and once I started to play online, I was very, very competitive and I would be like, I'm going to win, I'm going to win, I'm going to win. And I, I think maybe it translated into like like my photography because i wanted to just get better and better and better and um and i think one thing that actually really helped me at the, was at the end of 2014 i met up with a lot of different photographers just to just to kind of pick their brain and just meet other photographers because i didn't know many at the t at the time but and then i met with two older guys who were like in their 40s and um these two guys both told me that i was going to quit within a couple months and and that kind of gave me the drive to kind of stick with it. Yeah. So, so I don't know what their intent was with telling me that with, Oh, I'm going to just tell you the truth or I want you to bring you down, but no, they gave me more fire. They lit the fire underneath me more and I got better and better. And the very next year, 2015 is when I started to kind of get more attention um, online with, with Petapixel, with F stoppers and, you know, starting a channel and, I actually started the channel in 2016, but I actually started recording videos in 2015. Mm -hmm. okay. So they, they gave me that fire. So unintentionally or not, I don't know, but um, they gave me that that passion, that stronger passion. Of yeah, yeah, and it's something that we can't forget. Is there's, there's always going to be some critics, and I think it's important to measure them. Uh, I think I don't know if yeah. you do the same, but I go and whenever I receive some <laughs> negative comment, I go check their stuff. <laughs> all the time <laughs> are you worthy of criticism yes or no like if, if not then i just don't like i, I just ignore you whatever but uh, it's been i don't know it's better for your health. <laughs> yeah better for my mental health but again i am i am I, I think in my experience has been very very positive in general of course there's always the hater of course there's always like the guy complaining about something that you can't always control or there's like uh that, that that's like you, you're not there yet so you can't you don't know yet and some people have valid criticism and 100 uh, percent yeah. uh but i think for me it's been just positive the people i've met through this industry has been just fantastic it's been all love like 98 percent love and the two percent haters so like i mean yes we'll, we'll, we'll live with those people you got to focus on the on the positive types of people because yeah. those ne those negative there's some people that just live like i i i probably i have one dedicated person one one dedicated person who's just just any any type of forum where they can dislike or downvote the, they must have me like on a notification uh, on notifications like on google like anytime my name <laughs> my name pops up they do it then there's one person so them so it's weird some people are i mean focus on your craft come on like there's so many things else to do i watched the movie with my family yesterday do that with, do that yourself like come on do something do something else yeah, and, and I think it goes back to like, again, failures, right? Uh, I, I'm never, I'm not, I don't try to get bitter about like a failure in my photography because it happens again. I am maybe like you, me, I'm like 87 because I'm trying some, some, again, some really, really pushy stuff like in the studio and it's hard, right? It's not easy. And I'm like a 85, 15 of failure rate, like a 15%. I'm like, Ugh, I don't even want to share those photos. Like I don't like them yeah um I, I had that recently actually very yeah. very recently um 
the November of last year. Wow. I have the pictures on my computer and there I need to like find somebody like to like a confidant, like somebody to share <laughs> these images with them to see like, are they really, really that bad or am I going crazy? But it, I, again, it was actually a studio shoot and I don't do studio ever. And so I have those pictures that are going to stay there for now. And <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, I, I, I could have done, I don't know. I feel like I could have done much better or maybe it's just me. I don't know. I I'm used to doing stuff outdoors and that's my bread and butter. That's, that's, I love doing, I can go outside right now and create something I like within five minutes. Yeah. So yeah, but studio stuff, it's kind of scary for me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's super challenging. And, and I think it, it goes back to like, you know what, like now don't be bitter. Like whenever I I'm, frustrated about like a photo shoot that I had like you know instead of like going online and just like criticizing everyone and saying like uh, and going on Facebook groups and saying uh oh this is this is sucks this is terrible just trying to like you know be, just generate some positivity out of it and like a lesson learn or share it or even like discuss it or like ask some help and I think I don't know about you but whenever I had in trouble with something always had always always had some help or some feedback or some questions or some something that would help me fix whatever situation I faced and yeah. then move along and then like pro progress from there right did you yeah. have the same experience yeah actually um when it, that it sounds like egotistical in, in a small way but like it, it had been a long time since i failed that much or at least feel like i failed so much with that shoot this mm -hmm. past november and um so like i was trying my best to think okay you know what i feel very i feel like very frustrated very very upset because I feel like I could have done much better. And I used to be a very, very, very negative person years ago. And, and, and somehow, you know, I think there's some people that kind of inspired me to kind of just make, you know, it's an actual effort to be very positive. Yes. And <laughs> so, yeah, very much. So with that photo shoot that I failed with, that I felt like I failed with this past November, um, it would kind of felt like, like, you know what, I feel so negative, you know, what can I do to kind of break that down and, I feel like it's a tower building up and I need to break it down and be, be more, you know, realistic and, you know, making, you know, this isn't the end of the world. There's different things that could have done better. What did I did do that went well? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's kind of like a whole process of just breaking down all that negativity, all those strong feelings and, and trying to think of all the things that went well with that photo shoot and all the things that, you know, again, like I said, it's not the end of the world. You could redo a photo shoot. You you know, maybe you took amazing shots and, and you just didn't know that. And you, you know, the model liked it, but you just were too scared to show them because you felt you, you, you failed. So it's just a whole bunch. Yeah. A whole bunch of just different ways to just break it down, break down that, uh, that negative feeling. It's, it's a lot of work It is, And it, you know, if you have people that you can talk to, like my fiance, who hears all of the stuff where I'm getting, <laughs> like, I'm all upset. She's that, a cute, that helps she's a, a cute lot. bag basically <laughs> yeah just to, just to, just hear me out and then go back to what you're doing <laughs> yeah yeah awesome well it, it's i think it's a good it's a good takeaway from all of this and I, i'm glad that i was actually able to talk to you regarding those failures because i don't think there's a lot of people is our surrounding i think is very honest about like their feelings like a like uh, if I just name, name Rob, which I'm going to speak to afterwards or, or anyone that I know is like very open about saying, yeah, this is, this is a fail or this wasn't, didn't happen too greatly. But I think uh, exposing that to the public and sharing those stories to the actual worldwide internet and, <laughs> and telling them, Hey, we still, I mean, we're still learning, right? Like, I don't know about you, but I'm still learning a lot of stuff. So I, same here, same here. Every day there's something new that I'm learning. So I think it's interesting that, uh, and I want to thank you and commend you for uh, sharing those stories to, to people. Yeah, no problem. Like, I mean, I'm honestly an open book. I have nothing to, nothing at all to, to hide. And except for that photo shoot this past November. So. <laughs> yeah. So the challenge internet is going to be ask Francisco about this photo shoot in November. Yeah. I'll keep it on the computer for now. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Well, anything you want to, uh, before we leave, anything you want to plug in or um, you want to talk about uh, like what, what's the YouTube channel, what's your Instagram, if people don't follow you for some odd reasons. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't follow me on anything, then I, I, well, you know, I, I invite you to follow me on, on my Instagram. I share a lot of behind the scenes, like videos and different things. And every single post that every single post that I make on Instagram is meant to break down exactly how a photo was created. 
there's the EXIF information, there's behind the scenes photos, there's behind the scenes video more than likely. But um, my Instagram is at FJH photo. Yep. And aside from my Instagram, I highly recommend you guys check out my YouTube channel. It is youtube.com slash FJH photo. Same thing. I'm actually trying in my best to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So hopefully that happens. I think if I did the math right, I'll barely hit it at the end of the year. <laughs> so hopefully that happens. Yeah, so I hope my 2300 at the moment <laughs> will convert to you it's guys. A lot of uh, hustle, a lot of hustle. A lot of, it's, uh, YouTube is a lot of hustle, but it's, it's also the most challenging platform, I think, yes. because of the, the nature of video. And that's something that maybe that's worth another discussion, like how to grow on YouTube. Um, yeah, because I haven't figured it out. So <laughs> I got some tips I can I could provide. Okay, cool, some, cool, cool. Some. Okay, we'll do that after the recording. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, again, I want to commend you and thank you, Francisco, for participating into that discussion. And uh, again, please give him a follow uh, to help him reach him that 100k subscribers. And I guess I will see you maybe at WPPI. Yes, I'm gonna go to all the different ones happening later this year. Okay, cool. I'm getting vaccinated just for that. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome. We'll see you there. All right, for sure. For sure. <laughs>